today. Uh, we know your time is hard to come by and we really appreciate you spending it with us. A little bit about the companies here. We're going to be talking about Acumatica as the umbrella ERP and everybody on the line knows that Acumatica is an adaptable cloud uh, solution with mobile technology and they have an all-inclusive user licensing model that kind of differentiates them from the other ERPs on the market. They enable complete real-time view of business anytime, anywhere, and they sell their solution and implement their solution, service their solution, through a network of partners throughout the country, and they provide a full suite of integrated business management applications that includes financials, distribution, manufacturing, project accounting, CRM, and they're very adaptable. They're the one true cloud ERP platform designed for mid-sized customers. And it can fit into a variety of industries depending on those unique needs of individual clients. And we're also joined today by Artsel, established in 2002, 50 plus employees. They take the pain out of the sales order processes. They uh, match documents, their doc, doc, doc Alpha business digitation platform, order action application, transform scan paper and digital orders into actionable information. That's what we're going to talk about today. Shorter cycle times, fewer errors, better process control, improved customer experience. Uh, we are also joined by Scanco today. Scanco meets the needs of thousands of distribution and manufacturing companies. Their application resides on a real-time uh, iOS, Android, Windows devices so that those job shop personnel, manufacturing personnel on the floor interacting with Acumatica remotely with those remote devices can indicate material and labor in real time. And we're also joined by Patty over at American Payment Solutions and they're a full merchant services provider they have many, many different distribution, manufacturing companies, as well as restaurant, hospitality. Uh, they're a full service merchant services provider, and they get you the best rate by applying all of that data in Acumatica to get the level three processing. So uh, there's a reduced cost in that uh, credit card processing um, rate, and Patty's going to review how she can do that. And today we're going to be talking about automatically matching quotes, sales orders, purchase orders, work orders, so that uh, ScanCo can process that information from fax, scan, uh, email, paper documents coming into Acumatica, matching all that information so that ScanCo can use that information out on the job floor and in the warehouse to pick and pack uh, packages and prepare that for shipment. And Patty's going to be talking about how to get paid faster with her credit card processing integration with Acumatica. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to Will. Thank you so much, Will. Great. Thank you. My pleasure, Adrian. Uh, excited to be with you today. Uh, give me just a moment here to pull up uh, my presentation and share my screen. Make sure I've got the right monitor shared here and go to presentation mode. So uh, thanks for inviting me to, to join you all today. What's really excited, exciting to me about this conversation is seeing not just one solution and how you can get more value out of Acumatica, but putting the pieces together where you can create a complete solution end to end, uh, starting with the painful part of the process that involves document handling and usually involves manual data entry. Uh, and those are the components of this puzzle that Artsel helps to address. Uh, and Adrian, thanks, you did a really great job, I think, kind of teeing us up and in defining uh, who Artsel is. Um, just a few other details. We're established in 2002. We're based uh, in Toronto, Canada. We've got offices in St. Petersburg, Florida, and development in Ukraine. Uh, we are an Acumatica Level 2 ISV. Uh, we were proud platinum sponsors of the, of the summit. And uh, our focus, again, is on what we call int intelligent digital transformation. And that's a fancy way of saying uh, we're taking the physical and electronic documents you, got to, you have today quotes, orders, invoices, anything that contains that transaction data that you're trying to get into your ERP system that's supporting a business process uh, and capturing that efficiently and effectively in a way that's also scalable. So often what happens in our world is a client comes to us at a point in time 
uh, where they have a decision point like our business is growing rapidly and the choices between trying to find a better way to do things uh, or throwing another body at an old problem. And, and when I say that, what I mean is you're, you're adding a resource to do some pretty mundane routine work and you're not getting the most value out of the employees who have a lot of knowledge and understanding of your customers and your processes. And so we're taking the drudgery out of their day-to-day -day work and making the whole process more effective. And again, our goal is to help you get more value out of Acumatica and also, out of the, and also then leverage the other systems that you're gonna hear about today. So the market dynamics and where we fit in the current, currently focus is what's called digital transformation. And we leveraged uh, technologies you're hearing a lot about today like robotic process information, uh, robotic process automation. Interesting statistics out there about that. Um, from a recent AIM study, 81% of organizations believe that digital transformation is important. And when I say important, I mean it's critical to their future growth plans and strategies. Um, over half of the organizations that AIM polled said that they're living on the edge today, which means that they have technology in place to store their data if that data is in a structured form, but they haven't fully taken advantage of all the automation that, uh, that could be applied to that data once it's there, and they're stumbling over all kinds of process bottlenecks on the front end and back end of, of lots of common business processes. Um, one in less than one of the five of those organizations that AIM polled said that they were near where they wanted to be in terms of the core challenges they face in terms of business transformation. So what we're finding out by engaging with the market is that a lot of people see huge opportunities here that they haven't tapped into yet. So ERP systems like Acumatica have many business modules, uh, financials, which has associated documents that contain data, uh, as does all the other modules, where, whether that's CRM, project accounting, manufacturing, retail, supply chain, services, you, you get the idea. The, the, the point is wherever there's a module, whether, wherever there's data and a business process being supported, there's also tons of documentation that's part of that process that comes into your organization in all different formats through a bunch of different channels. Um, some, some customers are still faxing in orders, right? Uh, some, most are probably being received as email attachments. There's all different way, you know, it could be an online order form for that matter. So whether it's an electronic form, a paper document, a digital attachment, uh, organizations are struggling with all the different forms of data that they have to deal with and all the different forms of documents that are, are part of that process as well. And that's the challenge that we're helping to try to address with the Doc Alpha transformation platform. So the challenge uh, the companies have is that not all the documents they have are the same. Some have a greater level of difficulty for extracting the data. So you've got structured content. That's the sort of thing that you expect to see on a digital form uh, or that you expect from your ERP system. Then you've got semi-structured data where data fields in a variety of locations. And that's exactly the kind of stuff uh, we think of in terms of invoices, bills of lading, sales orders or purchase orders, uh, all those things where there may be a matching process involved and you've got multiple different pieces of paper uh, or digital documents supporting a different stage in a, in a decision or transaction process. And then a layer deeper where things get really complicated when it comes to trying to organize everything and support a process and get data out of, out of stuff is uh, those unstructured documents. And that could be the email itself, the body of the email that included the attachment of an order that had some additional instructions or details in there. Uh, contracts are a great example of that too, where things aren't always uh, in the same place in one contract or another. You've got different terms and conditions. And uh, notes, articles, again, you get the idea, anything there where there's not a distinct pattern and where if you're not gonna rely on a human being to do the work, there needs to be some additional intelligence applied. So the Artsil Transformation Platform provides the foundation for delivering what we call intelligent capture from documents and digital files. And we do that for providing all the components and capabilities needed to eliminate all the painful manual steps that you experience today. So that includes acquiring documents uh, from multiple channels and aggregating those together in a way that that's done for you automatically. That includes classifying those documents, which means identifying the types of documents you're talking about so you know where to look for information and what to do with the document. It's different whether it's a quote or it's an order or it's an invoice. Um, extracting the relevant information then from that document, so finding that vendor name or that amount, 
and then validating that information. And that can mean uh, anything from integrating with other business systems like Acumatica to look up and validate the vendor record. It could be checking a, a dollar amount on a particular inventory item or service. And it also means applying algorithms to the information in the document or, or data source itself. What that means is um, the software can automatically check your subtotals and make sure that they add up. So that if somebody miskeyed something or somebody just didn't do the math correctly themselves, the system is going to do all that fact checking for you and look for any exceptions. And then ultimately at the end of the process, what we've described as load here is really then taking all that data we've extracted for you efficiently and validated and then putting it into the system of record, which in this case is Acumatica. So doing that transaction entry for you automatically, again, so you can take advantage of that data in a more timely fashion and then feed it downstream to other processes that you're now able to automate efficiently as well. So that's our platform that we call Doc Alpha. Um, on top of our platform, we've built process-specific applications to handle the most common back office processes where it's a challenge to keep up with the pace of business growth. And the other challenge we're trying to help solve for is that if you're doing this from scratch every time, meaning you're starting with a, a platform, and then you're trying to solve for things like a purchase order matching, either uh, on, on either side of the equation, right, on the accounts payable or the receivable side. Uh, we want to get to the point where you don't have to build those things from scratch, and there's not a requirement for a lot of custom coding and a lot of heavy overhead time spent on, on setup. So um, based on the most common types of projects that benefit the most from what our platform provides, we offer vertical solutions with out-of-the-box functionality that'll extract the most common types of information required for a document. And that could mean for invoices, for orders, in this case, that's kind of what we're focusing on. Could be expense reports, remittance processing. Uh, you get the idea, but again, the, the, the idea here is we have a platform with very specific uh, processes that we can animate, uh, automate. Uh, but also, if you want to think outside of the box, and there's another process that has a huge dependency on large volumes of documents and data, and your challenge is getting, getting access to valid data quickly, those are the kind of problems that we can solve for you. Uh, and these package solutions, by the way, are available in a number of different deployment models. Uh, obviously, we're talking to uh, Acumatic of ours today, so we do have a cloud software as a service model. Uh, there is an on-prem option as well as uh, hosted options as well. So with that perspective, let's drill down into sales orders. Uh, sales order processing continues to be a major source of frustration for busy distributors and manufacturers. And as many organizations strive to optimize operations, order management uh, is often overlooked as, as the costs aren't clearly separated. So despite technology improvements, many companies continue to manually enter customer purchase orders as sales orders in their ERP systems. And the challenge there, again, is, is both uh, an efficiency issue in terms of the cost of getting that information in the system, but it's also an issue in terms of having timely access to the data when and where you need it. And that may mean if you want the ability to then look at uh, buying trends, buying behavior, and customer purchase trends, um, without timely access to that data, you can't do that in a meaningful way. And at the same time, if you're going to take advantage of some of the other solutions that you're going to hear about today, uh, part of what's critical is getting that data into Acumatica in a way that you have confidence in consistently, repeatably, and efficiently. So the challenges that are inherent to order processing or other high volume processes like vendor invoice processing um, are exactly the kinds of challenges that are perfect match for process automation using platforms like our Doc Alpha and applications like Order Action. So typical things, again, when it comes to these challenges, it's the volume that you have to deal with that presents a huge challenge. And as your business grows, the problem gets greater. Uh, multiple document formats, uh, that manual order entry, again, is not just a source of inefficiency, but a potential source of error. And that's all what we're trying to solve for. So we automate collecting orders, classifying those documents, getting the data out of them, ensuring the data is correct. Um, we can even do things then like route documents for approval or review uh, for any number of reasons. And then again, handling the last mile of connecting that to your ERP system and creating a valid transaction. Again, with any other decision points or review processes that you want along the way. So we're going to take a look here next at what's at the core of what we called our order action application. First, again, 
and it's overcoming that challenge of acquiring documents. So we do this through a multi-channel input, which is a fancy way of saying we look anywhere that you've got a document that may come into your organization uh, through any particular channel or touch point, and then automatically acquire documents uh, from there, right? So whether they're in file sharers, network folders, emails, anywhere that information ultimately gets stored or comes into the organization. And then we register them with the system and kick off the appropriate process. So the next step there is transforming the documents. Um, that basically means if you've got a physical document that we're digitizing, we're applying an OCR process to it. So we're gonna clean up that image as best we can. We're gonna apply optical character recognition to it. So again, turn what, what uh, the human eye sees as characters, but to a computer is just an image. We're now creating digital content that it can then process and work with. And then also as part of that process, uh, what happens a lot of times is you may have uh, a batch of, of documents that you've scanned in through your printer scanner. Uh, and whether they've been OCR'd or not, they've been all kind of put together into a single file made up of multiple documents. And so our process also allows you then to intelligently split those things out uh, into separate documents and then handle them appropriately. So you could have a mixed batch, right, of purchase orders and quotes and invoices, all kinds of different document types. And the system is designed to be intelligent enough to split them out, identify what's what, uh, apply any matching at that point in the process, or based on the type of document, know what to do next. And then as I mentioned, validation is part of that process. And then once everything is valid, now if you've got business rules that informs the system about what to do next, it can handle that for you as well. So one way we, I wanna talk a little bit about the, the document classification piece, because that can often be a challenge. One way we do that uh, to identify the type of document we're dealing with is to rely on uh, what we call a cascading methodology, uh, which can, and what that means is we are able to reference multiple data fields and multiple databases simultaneously in a way that's extremely efficient. And so if the classification information isn't in one database, for example, maybe it's not, you can't find the information you're looking for in Acumatica, right? We can look at other, other systems and sources to find that information for you. And the result there is that faster processing and higher accuracy when it comes to classification. Another area is, uh, that's, that's unique and that adds value is the way we validate business rules and apply matching and also detect duplicates as part of the process. So during that process, uh, the customer and order data is reconciled against multiple databases. So we ensure that what is being ordered and invoiced matches and that it falls within expectations. And if it finds a duplicate, it's gonna flag that and catch that for you as well. So next we're gonna take a look at three common scenarios as they relate to everything we've just described here, uh, to the receipt of a customer purchase order, to be matched against an invoice and other supporting documents in the ordered cash process. The first scenario we're gonna take a look at is the simplest one. And this is where we're trying to achieve for you a complete straight through process with minimal uh, human touch points. So in this case, let's say an email with a PO attached uh, is received. Um, all the required information is there in the attachment and in the email and everything's correct. So we've got one of those uh, perfect scenarios here where everything, uh, everything we need to automate this process is all correct and ready to go. The next scenario we're gonna take a look at is where a process owner has a digital purchase order and um, they're actually manually gonna upload it into the Doc Alpha system. And we're gonna use that scenario to talk about um, exceptions that may have come up and how the system handles the exceptions. So those exceptions could have certainly been part of a, of a purchase order that came in as an email attachment. But we're gonna start with the simplest model, then look at how we handle any exceptions. And then finally talk about another common scenario, which is where you've got a physical document, maybe that came in from the mail room that's been scanned and digitized. And you've got a bunch of those that have all been lumped together and talk about how the system's gonna parse those out and then handle a process workflow as part of that. So again, three scenarios here. As I mentioned, the first one's the simplest. This is one where automation does all the work. So we monitor specific mailboxes, uh, looking for invoices as attachments, and then we're automatically gonna detach those invoices, read those documents, classify them, um, apply business rules to them, and then uh, facilitate that going all the way through to Acumatica. Acumatica. 
So in that example, we facilitate a straight through process in which all required data has been extracted, all the business rules are validated, the order is automatically exported, which literally means you don't need to have a human touch point here. Um, again, uh, there are safeguards, right? It's going to look through and make sure that it has a high degree of confidence in the characters in the scan document if that email uh, PDF attachment wasn't already OCR'd. It's gonna validate and check everything against your existing business system records. It's gonna make sure there's no business rules there that require any review or, or uh, approvals uh, before creating that transaction. But again, in this scenario, everything gets right into your, uh, in, right into your ERP system for additional processing or handling by the other solutions you're gonna hear about today. Again, that's the scenario we'd like to see every time, but we live in a real world, right, where, uh, where there is human error introduced into the process. So in our second example, um, we're gonna start with a user doing the manual work of uploading a document from their desktop, or let's say it came from a web portal where somebody placed an order. And we're gonna use uh, the Doc Alpha interface, our image, image acquisition client, to select those files, browse to the file location, and then assign them to the proper user and to the proper workflow. So we're allowing that process to happen manually here that otherwise could also be automated, which is kind of showing you there's both a human interface and then there's business logic that can allow you to achieve this in more than one way. So um, that was the easy part, right? Getting everything into the system. Um, but then it comes down to what does the system do with the, the documents and the data? And in this example, there's a rule for this vendor that if a purchase order is over $3,000, it's gonna require approval. Um, the approval will be notified by email uh, where they click on a link and then they can approve or reject the order. And in this example, the order is approved and sent uh, for export to the ERP system where the transaction record can be created automatically. So again, they just receive an email, there's a link they click on, they go into the interface here, they can review it, provide their approvals, click, and then again, ends up in transaction entry in the ERP system or process. I might have spoke there, I think I might have said, uh, in, I'm not sure if I said invoice instead of order, but th this scenario again is a customer order that was placed and the purchase order threshold may have something to do with the you know, credit availability, that kind of thing, or any other business rule that, that may then impact uh, the acceptance and processing of that order. So one more scenario, uh, and then this happens a lot too. We're gonna look at a batch of orders that have arrived and they've been scanned together by the mailroom as a single PDF file to be processed. Um, and if that's not how you're doing things today, if nothing else, this means you can, you can do that, right? You can take all of those documents, digitize them in one lump, and then let the system deal with how to sort through them. So Doc Alpha can easily handle the optical character recognition part, split the documents, go through a validation process. But in this scenario, we're gonna throw a little bit of a curveball in here. First of all, uh, there was an issue with the document itself. Maybe there was a smudge on it, a coffee stain, something that the system itself simply couldn't overcome. And, and maybe even a human operator uh, couldn't decipher what was on there, or at least we needed assistance from a human operator to, to give us some more guidance. So this is kind of where the intelligence piece comes, comes into play here as well. Um, so the system is a result of finding, finding some errors. The other error it also found, by the way, was a price total mismatch. So the subtotals didn't match the total, uh, and the system was able to flag that automatically as well. Again, same process. It's gonna flag that, notify somebody via an email of two problems with the orders it received, and then request some interve intervention. Now, part of that process too, as I mentioned, we're gonna split the orders such that they're not bound together and they can be processed separately. And then we saw the three exceptions that were part of, the, part of it, right? One was um, an issue with the, da the data itself. So very low confidence characters. You'll notice there was maybe a blur or a smudge or something, so we couldn't see the, the item number exactly and we needed, we needed some additional validation. And then we also couldn't find uh, the customer name, right? And so there, was, so there was some missing data there that we needed to solve for. And the system in this interface, as you can see, is gonna give you the ability to flag and identify what's missing, and then give you data fields where you can manu either manually input the correct information um, or just validate, validate that the information there was correct. And again, also I mentioned price total mismatches. This is where the system's able to flag and identify. Mm, some, somebody must have miskeyed something on the order here, or maybe there's a bug in, in, the, uh, in the order application itself. And we can flag and identify that for you as well and show that, hey, sorry, these, these totals don't add up. 
And so uh, machine learning is part of uh, the new technology that we apply to solving this problem that, uh, that, that takes care of some of the uncertainties and also means that you don't have to do as much configuration and setup in advance as part of this process. So um, historically, the way that intelligent capture solutions have worked is you're looking at the specific location for information in a document. And that means that you need to kind of create definitions for every possible combination of order invoice type that you have. And that's a, that's a, that creates the problems we talked about when it comes to semi-structured or unstructured data. You can't find things purely based on location. And so what we do instead is give you both the ability to look at location and then also look at context. So if you see a field like, if you see a, a word like subtotal or total, then look in that vicinity or in that region for a number or an amount with a dollar sign uh, or a currency symbol to, to, find it, to find the information for you intelligently. And it's also designed to continue to be self-learning. So it'll compensate for data shifts. It'll learn through corrective action as well. So if, if a human user goes in and says, no, look here for a subtotal, it's going to record and it's going to understand and it's going to adapt to those patterns over time. And it shares that knowledge then the next time you go through this process and can share that knowledge with other processes that may be automated by the same platform. So again, you'll notice here is an example where the data in the invoice is, has moved up, right? Uh, again, human, human beings aren't always as consistent as machines when it comes to that sort of stuff. And I mentioned a text or phrase, you may have information like uh, total amount and then a dollar amount next to it. And so it's gonna use that anchor of the total to look for the amount. And again, continues to learn and adapt to different, different circumstances. So with the use of our advanced machine learning auto find function, users can teach the system to look for information that varies in placement by associating with that key phrase. So we talked about the order example with the subtotals and extracting it. And with most orders or invoices, you know, based on the number of line items on the next invoice, the subtotal line can move around. And that can cause a problem with a lot of different systems. But again, our solution has been at adding some intelligence to this, so you don't have to do any custom coding or configuration to get there. Um, the huge advantage there, again, obviously, is to the process as it exists, um, but also it's going to radically speed up the time it takes to get a system like this up and running. So you can measure that, that ramp up time in weeks rather than months and capture your return on investment a lot more quickly. So we've seen orders going through for verification, including one that's automatically approved because all the data is correct, uh, and get that processed and turned into a transaction in Acumatica. One requiring additional reviewer approval and some validation. And then one was escalated to deal with some identified errors and exceptions by the system, where a human being helped to guide it through the system to, uh, to address those errors. And then the system learned from that experience as well. So, um, Hopefully that's given you a good overview here of our solution and how it can help facilitate getting timely access to data, ensuring that data is correct, proactively identifying errors and exceptions, uh, presenting duplicate orders from being processed, uh, and then as a result, giving you timely access to data and boosting the return on investment from your ERP system. Um, pricing, just to give you a little bit of insight and information about our product, uh, it is transaction-based. It's based on the number of processed documents. Um, there are value bands that determine that, that pricing and how that pricing is ranged. Um, there are components and services that are bundled into that to set up the specific uh, order action application for you. Um, the, the base pricing includes professional services. Um, and so those are kind of the parameters. And so if you wanted more details on pricing, that's where we want to go through kind of a one-on-one -on -one discovery call. Take a look at the specific steps in your process, uh, where are the decision points, the type of documents you need help with. Uh, and then the volume of documents that you plan on, on having to address using our solution. So what we're trying to achieve here for you is giving you the ability to increase document volume without adding additional staff or resources. And if you've got staff today that's overburdened with just dealing with paper shuffling and data entry, you can get a lot more value from those employees. We wanna keep all those business processes running uh, at optimal speed and performance, reduce your overhead, get rid of that manual data entry and intervention where it's not necessary. And again, get, get the right data in the right hands of the right people quickly. Um, just real quickly then, why, why choose Artsil to work with? Um, we have tons of experience working with the uh, Acumatica and with the ERP system, VARS. And so our model in general from a program standpoint is very partner friendly. 
Um, we are aware of the time and effort it can take to get up to speed with the new solution uh, and the concern that bars have about uh, turning that into revenues. And we do that in a way that involves some hand-holding from us so that you get first-hand experience successfully selling, implementing, and supporting uh, a Doc Alpha implementation in a way that then allows you to repeat that process on your own uh, till you're off and running. Uh, so if you want to talk to us more after the session, I welcome you to engage with us to talk about our referral program, our reseller program, and all the ways that we support you to be successful. Adrian, with that, I think it's uh, that's my cue to turn it back over to you and, and to the next member of the, the panel today. Thank you for that, Will. And Richard uh, is going to be talking about ScanCo and taking all those paper documents and using them on the handheld device out in the warehouse and manufacturing floor. So Richard, thank you. Thanks for, uh, for teaming me up. That's right, everybody. My name is Richard Kurtzer. I'm here from ScanCo. And uh, we had a nice intro up front about what we do. We actually do warehouse and manufacturing, barcoding and data collection uh, for Acumatica. And we use Android and Apple iOS devices for that. Just to give you a little bit of an idea of how far and wide we are spreading our product around the country and actually up beyond the U.S. and into Canada, here's a map of our current uh, customer sites on Acumatica. And there are about half of them are using both our warehouse and manufacturing components, and then the other half of our customers are using one or the other. And those two main products that we do, uh, we have, we're going to start with XScan Man Manufacturing today. This uh, ties into the Acumatica Manufacturing Module to let you do direct labor tracking material issues, as well as your production entry. And then we're going to follow that with ScanCo Warehouse. We're going to do a quick overview demo live of each to show you how order fulfillment, purchase order receiving, physical counts, transfers, bin management, all these things, how it all works. And uh, I'm fresh off of visiting a customer site this morning, helping them get started in uh, New Jersey. And they are using both the manufacturing and the warehouse side of things. And um, they're off to a running start. So that's always nice to see. As far as hardware goes, like I said, we're using both iOS and Android. Um, real popular option are the Zebra devices with or without keyboard, TC20s, as well as Cognex. They make some highly ruggedized housings for your Android devices. But without further ado, I'm going to move right over to my live system. So this is actually a live view from one of my Android handhelds, and I've got our XScan manufacturing application already running. So as you can see, it's a real simple and clean interface. And when it's time to start your production process, you can literally just start moving stuff out of inventory or you know, your parts and move it into work and process with material issue. So you just click on material issue and you'll see um, that the system very logically takes you through the steps of your transaction. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do, and uh, one important thing is that every field is addressable both as a barcode and as a lookup. So I'm gonna go ahead and scan the production number that I want to work with. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the first SKU that I want to issue there. And the system is going to automatically fill in the rest of the attributes because we are talking live to Acumatica. Um, and then I'll also need to pick which bin I'm issuing that out of. What I'll need to do is I'll need to hit the magnifying glass. And the system is actually going to filter what's going on in the warehouse. So I have more than one bin in my warehouse here. But since all the inventory for this item is in row one, shelf one, that's all it's going to show me. So I can select that. And let's see, I have issued 1419 and I have 165 remaining. So let's say I actually need to issue more than that. I've got a little bit of scrap. I decided I need some more as the operator. If, if I hit 175 there, the system actually is going to ask me to confirm that quantity. So you'll be able to configure it whether or not you want it to do an over issue. Uh, negative issues work in the same way. If I needed to return, I could just put a negative number in for that issue quantity or change my transaction type over to a return. Now, this is a lot controlled item, and I'll need to pick the lot that I'm pulling this from. And they're all coming from that same lot. I'll hit enter, and we're done. And this corresponds to the material transaction in Acumatica. So now, uh, that music wire has been moved out of my inventory and is now in you know, workstation 10 for this particular production number. Now, the neat thing with the software is I finished the transaction, but the production number stayed in there. The system sort of assumes that you're going to need to issue more than one item per production number. We don't want to have to make you scan that again until, it's re until you're ready to go to a different order, and I am. 
So I'm going to go ahead and grab, click back in, grab a different order there, pick an item number that I need for this particular item. Actually, let's grab that one there. So I'm going to show you how to do a negative issue on that same original production number here. And this will actually, let's go ahead and code that in. Drill in, grab my item, grab the bin number. And this time I actually want to return 10 pieces of that. Do you want to return the item? Yes, I do. And that'll correct my over issue situation. Distribute 10, back to that same lot. And now that, issue, that uh, raw material is back on the shelf. Now, as I'm going through the day, I'm of course gonna to wanna to be able to track how much I'm completing uh, by employee. So if I wanna track direct labor, and, and one of the important things is you can always do back flush as well. What most of our customers will typically start with is material issues and completions. And once they're used to that workflow, then they'll start adding in uh, labor depending on how that works for them. So first thing to do would be to enter in an employee number. This can be a barcode off of an employee badge, really your choice on how do you want that uh, workflow to go. But of course you'll need to just pick that number there. And then we're going to go ahead and work on this production number. And since we are a multi-shift operation, I'll need to pick that I'm working on the first shift and track in. And now the clock is running on that application. And the cool thing is, um, you know, in a warehouse, you typically have one handheld uh, per employee. On the shop floor, it's typically you'll have one of these handhelds or a tablet for every couple of workstations. So once I've tracked in with one employee, I can hand this off to the next person and they can track in as well. And they can work on a different production number. And now we have the labor clocks running for two different employees on two different transactions at the same time. So let's go ahead and we're gonna finish up that first one. I think it was this employee here. Go back here, grab the right employee, production number. You can see there's my start time, there's my end time, and I finished one within that time. So now the difference for that is gonna show up as a labor transaction in Acumatica, tracking direct labor. And uh, one of the other neat things that we're gonna be adding pretty soon is labor dilution. Because think about it, one person is capable of running multiple machines, but how do you track the labor across it? Right now, in a lot of systems, you either have to back flush or you have to um, track one at a time. And if I tried to log into four machines with one person, I'd be getting four times the labor cost. So we're adding in advanced labor dilution later this year, which will allow one person to evenly spread their um, labor charges evenly or to the dilution method of the, of the customer's choice across those multiple work centers. So when it's time to finish production and move some stuff from work in process into inventory, we can do a production entry. So let's go back to my production number here. I've got my Keurigs going, and I want to complete those into one of my, my finished goods bins. Let's go with row one, shelf three. And I've made two of them. And since this is a serialized item, it is going to force me to scan a unique serial number in and issue it to that piece of inventory. So there's one, and click back into the field there. And there's a second. So now I've made my two machines, all the inventory is taking out, taken out of work in process, and now I have two fresh coffee makers on the shelf ready to sell my customers. So that's the quick overview of XScan manufacturing. Um, we've got a lot of people across the country using it. We're gonna have some exciting new additions coming, and I'm sure you'll see those on a future ERT VAR webinar, and let's switch over to the warehouse side of things. Let me just go back to my main screen here. And just for time's sake, I'm already logged in, but once you log in, and we support multi-warehouse, multi-company, it's very flexible, 
you're going to get to your main list of transactions. So on inventory, I can transfer things within my current warehouse or between different warehouses. Physical count allows me to tie into Acumatica's uh, physical count system to do both my full counts and my cycle counts. Sales order processing lets me ship out sales orders both by order and by customer, and purchase orders let me receive purchase orders both by um, purchase order number and by vendor. So let's go ahead and start there since we need to receive stuff in in order to be able to have some inventory. You know, got to start with something. So let's go ahead and grab an order. And of course, all of this can go in with a barcode or with a report. But let's say um, you got you got one in the door and it just has the purchase order number on the box, no barcode. You can either type the number in or you could just click in and see what your open purchase order numbers are. So let's pick order number 618 here. It's automatically going to show me the vendor, the warehouse, and then I can drill in and see what items are available or I can scan the first item that's left. So what quantity left is wrong means is that I've already received what's on there. So let's drill in and see what's left on this order. So you see my widgets are highlighted in red. That means I've received them. It's not going to let me double receive something. So I can, eat, I can always click the item I want to receive next. A couple other options you have. So right now, this is set to go into my receiving bin so I can put it away later. And then one of the other neat things that we can do is we can print labels if you want. I can turn that on right there. And let's say if those items came in uh, unlabeled, I can just enter in 10, or if I just need a couple labels, I can enter in whatever I actually need. So just enter in my quantity to print, quantity to receive, check. And you can see the print request is successful. That means the print job has been sent to whatever my centrally located or um, kind of, I could do a belt-worn printer, really any Zebra networkable printer is going to work for this and we help you with the label setup. And once I've done that, I can send that transaction up to Acumatica to create the receipt and now that inventory is available for sale. So once I brought that inventory in, let's say I want to do a put away and move some stuff out of receiving and into a regular bin. And Feel free to ask any questions at the end. You'll notice that the transaction flow is pretty quick, and that's really on purpose. This is meant to be the kind of system that, you know, anybody that's got reasonable familiarity with an iPhone or a Windows phone or, a, uh, or an Android phone in this case will be able to get up and running on the first day and get very effective very quickly. So you're not going to spend a ton of time on the handheld training. So let's go ahead and grab an item. Okay, so I've picked my item, there's my description, my unit of measure, and I can pick which bin I want to move it from. Let's see, I've got a ton of these in row one, shelf one. So let's move some of these to a put away location. Put all my overstock in say row one, shelf three. It's a nice high shelf, it'll free up some space. And let's move 1500 pieces of that. It's a small item, that's just a couple of cases. Check, and now I can grab another item while we're at it. Move some pogo sticks, and let's see where those are, are hiding. So I've got 50 of them in receiving and 95 of them in row one, shelf one. Let's move, let's do the put away out of receiving. And we can just put those in row one, shelf one. And I can, you know, literally just walk over and scan my, uh, my location. Again, if I need to print labels, I can turn on the print label radio button, enter the quantity, and it'll print them automatically. If I want to, uh, the scan each radio button means that instead of manually entering the quantity on the transaction, I would scan the barcode for each one I want to move. Not particularly convenient for moving a lot of small items, but it's very helpful if you're moving a small amount of big items. And that's basically how our serial number workflow works. For example, if this were serialized and I hit 50, I would have to scan in the serial numbers um, for each one that I need to move to validate that I'm moving the right units there. So we're going to move 50. And I've put that in my send queue as well. And you'll see up in the corner here, uh, I've got a send button. And once I hit that, it's going to send both of those lines off to Acumatica. The transfer has been made. And now I can go to my sales orders and start shipping out items. So I'm going to just go ahead and go ship by item. And I'm going to look up a customer account and see what's open for them. You can see I have all of my customer accounts. And one of the cool thing is, uh, even if I just know the first couple letters of that customer account, it'll auto filter it. So 
So we have a lot of text filtering, sorting, a lot of that's built into the system because we have live data view. So you can see this customer's got a few items that are on order. Uh, if I were starting from a barcode, of course, I could just scan it in from there. And now it's going to ask what sales order I want to associate it with. I'm going to drill in and see what's open. I've got a few different orders open with this item. If there was only one, it would automatically uh, pick it for me. But I want to ship the oldest order first in this case. And uh, let's go ahead and grab that from row one, shelf one. And we're going to do all 250 because i got plenty of stock of these. I don't need the label, so I'm going to turn that off. And I hit check. Data saved successfully. Let's do one more line there. Let's get my baby products going. And we'll pick my sales order that I need. Let's go with the oldest one that I have in this case as well. And in terms of where I want to pull that inventory from, I can see that I have some in row one, shelf one, and two. So let's go with one that's my main pick location in this case. Um, now, common situation, maybe you're short on inventory, you have five out of 10 needed. You could ship however many you actually have. So if I only wanted to ship five, I could. Um, and then once that's ready to go, I hit send, and that creates the shipments within Acumatica. And I'm coming to the end of my time here. So um, that's really the dime tour of what's going on with our handhelds for Scanco on Acumatica. I mean, as you can see, it's designed to be a really fast, really easy to use way to execute what's going on on the warehouse floor and on your shop floor, um, you know, using a handheld device and barcoding. So uh, feel free to ask some questions at the end. I will be here and uh, thank you all very much for listening. Thank you, Richard and Patty. We're gonna talk about credit card processing. Thank you so much, Adrian. Will and Richard, great presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, the value that we, the three solutions that are being presented today, help bring to your customers as far as the process automation while also providing you with verification, efficiency, security, and compliance is invaluable. Now, what I'd like to talk about is once you do have these orders in the system and your warehouse is in order, of course, you've delivered the items, let's get you paid. What's the easiest way to get paid through Acumatica? Let me just start by mentioning that we've been in the business for over 25 years. We have over 4,000 companies that are processing through us. 22 countries are being served as we speak. No volume is too high or too low. As you can see, the average customer processes from 2,000 to 20 million thousand dollars a month. So we're able to help you. Now the best way to understand and get paid quicker and with the very lowest rate available in the industry is by understanding the fee structure. And that's something that we would like to walk you through. I won't go through it in detail today because there are time constraints, but I want you to know there are dangers behind flat rates, such as the fact that you would lose any programs the credit card processing companies put in place for you and you're not able to take advantage of them. I'm going to specifically focus on level three processing and you'll see exactly what you're missing out on if you are currently processing with a flat rate contract. The same will apply for tiered pricing. And I can explain all of this in further detail to you, but I do want you to see the different fee structures and the one that is highly recommended, which would be Interchange Plus. Interchange Plus basically allows the processor to deliver the hard cost directly from the card brands to you and negotiate a transaction fee or any markup fee. Once that fee is negotiated, it is very transparent and you're able to see and confirm exactly how much the card brand is charging you, which we have no control over, and exactly how much your processor is charging you. So we help you decipher your statements by understanding the background of where the fees are coming from exactly. How much is the bank making? How much are the card brands making? And yes, how much is that processor making off of your account? Where exactly is there room for savings? Let's talk a little bit about level three. So just so you get an idea, level three has been in place for about six years. One in five American-based business-to-business companies process some or all of their transactions with level three data. The average company will save about $18,000 a year, although we have seen companies save over $100,000 per year simply by processing through level three. It's very easy to qualify for level three. 
You have to be a US-based company and you have to accept corporate or government cards. Every time you accept one of those cards, you're entitled to a lower rate. 80% of companies still don't process through level three. Why? Because they didn't know about it and that's what we're here for. We're here to inform you in detail what exactly is necessary in order to qualify transactions for level three. And we're also here to tell you that we've automated the process within Acumatica. So once you do get that order through Artsil and the invoice is ready to go, you capture the payment, we deliver the, the fields that you see on this screen directly to Visa MasterCard on your behalf in order to qualify your transactions for level three. Many companies will tell us, why not just process through Authorize.net? You can see on the screen, Authorize.net number one does not offer level three, unless you'd like to type in the 13 or 16 fields that I showed you on my previous slide. The other reason is that if you process with other processors that are not integrated to your ERP, you have to go to different companies if ever you have a credit card processing issue versus if you process with an integrated solution such as American Payment Solutions, you go to us, we're the one-stop shop, we find out what the issue is, resolve it, and we worry about cleaning fingers at a later time. By the way, we do not charge to turn on the credit card processing within Acumatica. Installation, implementation, training, maintenance, or support available at absolutely no charge to you. We also offer 12-hour funding and provide the data that Authorize.net is not providing to Visa MasterCard on your behalf. Just so you get an idea, this is what Authorize.net would deliver. And this is what we would deliver. So you can see it's a difference, and we make sure that you get that lower rate by delivering that data. Now, why not let Acumatica do all the heavy lifting for you? Artsil is already helping you out to automate the process and make sure that you're getting the action solutions for rapid application deployment. And then with ScanCo, your warehouse couldn't be in better hands. You can have all the way through man your manufacturing process taken care of and automated through ScanCo. Use the integration that's right for you. American Payment Solutions, ScanCo, and Artsil. I'm not exaggerating. And if you haven't been paying attention up until now, please look at this. This is a clear example of how much money you can save by processing through level three. And I want you to take a look at the screen right now. It's $17,000 worth. Now this has got to be worth something to you. If you're interested in purchasing Artsil or ScanCo, let me take a look at your statements, give you a free audit of your existing processors, rates, and fees, and I guarantee, ladies and gentlemen, I will find a savings for you. No strings attached. With that, I'd like to just jump over to the software really quick and show you how simple it is. One of the limitations of Authorize.net, for example, is that you could only set up 10 cards per customer. With American Payment Solutions, there are no limits. You can set up as many cards as you'd like. You can also set up for ACH payments. So you can see I have several payments set up here. We follow Acumatica security settings and user accounts so you don't have to reset any of that up. It's very simple to enter new card information. If you see the screen right now, the card number is entered. We tokenize the number and store it in our secured vault. You also have access for a validation code and an email address per card which means the email address will receive a receipt every time you complete a transaction. You can process transactions directly within sales orders, also within accounts receivable. You can apply multiple payment types if you're processing through payments and applications. So pre-authorizations are available right at the sales order level, or you can capture directly at the sales order level as well. And I actually would like to just quickly show you how simple it would be to accept the payment through a sales order, what we try to do is make sure that we maintain all of the standard functionality from Acumatica and not have you step outside of Acumatica at all or jump from one tab to another, which is what many other processors will have you do. They'll have you jumping from one tab to the other and just change your workflow process. Our number one goal is to make sure that you do not have to change your workflow process, that you can actually continue the same process you follow currently within Acumatica. And really, we wanted to just add the option to make a payment using credit card. Now that I've saved my sales order, if I go to my payment settings, you can see the default credit card that I chose while I was under finance is available on the screen. I can also choose from a list of cards or a list of payment types. 
and I can either pre-authorize, as I mentioned before, or capture. Once you click on the authorization or capture button, we're going to verify the information you provided is a match. Now, because we do integrate with several solutions out there, um, even if you're processing through your e-commerce solution, we are one of the processors that will offer level three rates, which is something very rare in our industry. The transaction has been processed. You'll see the screen checkbox, and you'll also see a pre-authorization number. The same would apply if you're capturing the funds. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, one last thing that I'd like to mention, aside from the fact that we provide one-on-one -on -one presentations, is the fact that we also provide 24 seven live support. We were talking about how it's a luxury to have a live human being on the other side of the line and that's exactly what you'll get with us. We also offer 12 hour funding. If you back up by 9 p.m. Eastern time, the funds will be available in your bank account the next morning at 8 a.m. across all card brands. We also offer American Express Op Blue. Multi-currency is available as well and free PCI support. No charge at all. We have a team dedicated exclusively to PCI compliance. So with that said, I'd like to just thank everybody once again for allowing us to present our solutions. Please know that if you're interested in a free audit, all you have to do is send us a copy of your three most current merchant statements, and we will be more than happy to provide you with this audit. Guaranteed savings. If we're not able to beat or match our competitors, we will pay you $500 for allowing us to analyze your statements. Adrian, I'd like to thank you once again and hand it back over to you. Thank you, Patty. Great presentation, everybody. Richard and uh, Will, thank you.